Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering question number five now from the January 2022 International A Level LXL Mechanics M1 paper. Um, this question here is about statics. We have a particle of mass M rests in equilibrium on a fixed rough plane under the action of a force of magnitude x, which is acting up the plane. The force acts up a line of greatest slope of the plane, as shown in figure 3. The plane is inclined at an angle of alpha to the horizontal, where tan of alpha is 3 quarters. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is mu. When x equals 2p, the particle is on the point of sliding up the plane. But when x equals p, the particle is on the point of sliding down the plane. Okay, so when x equals 2p, it's about to go up the plane. It's about to be pushed up the plane. But when x equals 1p, it's just preventing, that force is just preventing it from sliding down the plane, which it would do if there was no force due to gravity. Okay, so we want to find the value of mu. So this is a rough plane. So there is a, um, you know, there's some friction, which is involved here. And in both these cases, the maximum value of friction has been achieved because it's on the point of sliding. Any change, any greater force acting, or in this case, any less force acting, then what will happen was it will start sliding. In this case, if it's more than two, people slide up the plane. If it's less than P, it will slide down the plane. So it's just on the point of sliding. So the maximum value of friction has been achieved. If you remember, friction always opposes the motion until it reaches a value which it cannot exceed, which is called F max. Now, F max is equal to mu times R, where R is the uh, reaction force, um, on, you know, the reaction, normal reactant contact force, um, where the, con the surfaces are in contact where the friction is. So we got to find the value of mu. So it looks like we're going to make two sets of equations uh, to try to solve this, one from the first situation and one from the second situation. Now, when I have forces acting like this, I like to draw the forces acting upwards, like on this side of the object rather than before the object. So I'm going to kind of redraw this a little bit down here. So I've taken a copy of this without the line, and I'm going to redraw the forces on this according to how I like to draw them. So I'm going to draw the force. In this case, it's going to be 2p up the plane like this. I'll draw it on that side. It just makes everything clearer for me. We have the weight of the object acting down. That's the weight, which is, we don't know the, the mass, so we'll just say mg. We have the reaction force where the contact, the surfaces are in contact. That's R acting perpendicular to the plane. Um, and those are the forces, except for, of course, it's on the point of sliding up the plane. So it's just about to slide up the plane, so you're going to have a frictional force acting down. Okay, so that's going to be, I'm going to call it F M, F max. Okay, because it's on the point of sliding up, friction is preventing it from sliding up. So in this case, friction is acting down the plane. So these are all the forces acting on this object. Now, I want to resolve the forces par parallel and perpendicular to the plane. We always do that now. It's on the point of sliding up, so I'll, I'll take up as positive. It really doesn't matter because it's an equilibrium. So the upward forces and the downward forces will be the same. So if I look at what's parallel to the plane, okay, I have the component of the weight. So we have got to think about the component of the weight. So I'll just draw that in a slightly different color because I'm resolving that force perpendicular to the plane. So that's not a force in itself. That's just the weight being resolved perpendicular and parallel to the plane. Now the angle between this line and the, verti the vertical, this line here and the vertical weight is alpha. The same as the angle there. The reason being this is a right angle triangle and this is a right angle triangle Okay, so they both have a right angle. This has a right angle over there. That does over there. And this angle is common to this triangle as it is to this triangle. So if this, uh, if this angle and the right angle are the same in the, little tr in the big triangle, and if this angle and the right angle are the same in this small triangle, then the third angles must be the same. So that's like from similarity. If you didn't understand that, no problem. As long as you realize that this angle is always the same as the angle made the angle uh, of incline of the plane, okay, this angle between the weight and the line that is perpendicular to the plane. All right, so that's alpha. So if I resolve my forces perpendicular to the plane, I can say that R must be equal to mg times, now this is going to be mg going into the angle. When you resolve going into the angle, it's 
cosine. So mg times cosine alpha, you can think about it as this is the adjacent side if you want. So mg times cosine alpha, that's r. And then if I resolve the forces per parallel to the plane, this is mg. Going away from the angle, that'll be mg times sine alpha. mg sine alpha. Okay, so if I resolve um, parallel to the plane, I'll, I'll say 2p is equal to mg times sine alpha. And then I've also got plus on that side, f max. And we know that f max is equal to mu times r. All right, so I could say from here that 2p is equal to mg sine alpha plus mu times r. So it's mu times r, which is mg cosine alpha. mg cosine alpha. So that's one equation I formed from the fact that x equals 2p is when the particle is on the point of sliding up the plane. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look at the other situation where it's about to slide down the plane when x equals p. So in this case, we have here the force acting up the plane, which is x, okay, which is this, this time it's going to be p. Um, it's, it's about to slide down the plane. So we've also got the weight, of course, which is mg. And we've also got the reaction force acting perpendicular to the plane, which is R. But in this case here, we have the friction acting up the plane. Why? Because it's about to slide down the plane. So this time, F max is up the plane. And F max has been achieved because it's on the point of sliding, just about to slide. So friction has reached its limiting value. So now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the force again for the, for the uh, weight. Okay, so we'll resolve the force for the weight. So this is going to be the, oops, let me make it a bit thinner, a bit too thick. That would be the force perpendicular and this parallel to the plane. Okay, so remember again, this is alpha. So this is mg times cosine alpha, and this is mg times sine alpha. So this is now on the point of sliding down, so friction is preventing it, so it's acting up the plane. So if I resolve again, Perpendicular to the plane, I'll get the same thing, R equals mg times cosine alpha. And if we resolve parallel to the plane, if I take down as positive this time because it's about to slide down, although it doesn't really matter because you end up with the same equation because both sides are equal to each other because it's not accelerating, it's static. So mg times the sine alpha, this time it's equal to f max plus p. And we know f max is equal to mu r. So I can replace F max with the mu times mg cosine alpha. So I have mg sine alpha equals mu times mg cosine alpha plus p. So that's my second equation. So let's bring these two equations together. Okay, so these are the two. This is the equation from the first page. This is the equation that I just wrote now. So now we can try to solve this to find what mu is. Okay, so what I could do here is I could try to eliminate the P's. Okay, so let's first um, let's first bring the P's on one side. Okay, um, let's see. I've got mg sine alpha. So let me just write it. The second, this first equation. Let me write it as mg sine alpha equals two p minus mu mg cosine alpha. Okay, so I've just rewritten this, um, making mg sine alpha. This is also mg sine alpha. mg sine alpha is equal to, this is p plus mu times mg cosine alpha. All right, so if I want to get rid of the p, what I'm going to do is, because we're going to find alpha in the end, uh, mu in the end, we're going to find the coefficient of friction. So if I multiply this equation by 2, this will give me 2 mg sine alpha alpha equals 2p um, plus 2 mu mg cosine alpha. Um, so if I take these two equations and I subtract them, I can subtract this way so that I'll end up with 2 mg sine alpha minus mg sine alpha, which is mg sine alpha. 
Okay, let me call this equation 1 and equation 3. So I'm doing equation 3 minus equation 1, just so we can be clear what we're doing. E equals 2p minus 2p is, we've got rid of the p's now, and we've got 2 mu minus minus mu. That gives me 2 mu mg cosine alpha minus minus mu mg cosine alpha. They're, bo they're both like terms, but 2 minus minus 1 is 3, so that's 3 times mu mg cosine alpha. So now if I divide both sides by mg cosine alpha, in fact by 3 mg cosine alpha, I'll get mu. So I have mg sine alpha divided by 3 mg cosine alpha, and that's what my mu is. The mg's cancel out. Now I know that sine alpha from P2, sine alpha over cosine alpha is equal to tan alpha. Okay, that's a quick way of finding this answer here now. So we'll say mu is equal to one third times the tan of alpha. Okay, and we they told us in the question what the tan of alpha is. It's three quarters. Okay, so the tan of alpha is three quarters. So we can say that as we know that the tan of alpha equals three quarters, we can say mu is equal to one third times three over four. So therefore mu is equal to one over four. Three cancel out. And there's the answer to that question. Now, this makes it a lot easier using this identity. And now having tan alpha, we didn't even have to work out what sine or cosine alpha is. We didn't have to work out what the um, angle alpha is. Okay, normally what we could have done, we could have worked out what alpha is. Um, or we could have worked out that the tan of alpha is opposite of adjacent. So this is going to be 5. So the sine of alpha would be 3 fifths and the cosine alpha would be 4 fifths. And we could have used those fractions in these in these places here and tried to solve. But I think this is an easier way of dealing with it. Just eliminating the p's, making mu the subject. And when we get sine alpha over cosine alpha, that will, that will give us tan alpha, which we already know is 3 quarters. I think it, that makes the calculation a lot easier. So we used two different uh, situations. We used the first situation when x equals 2p, the particles on the point of sliding up the plane. Okay, in which case the friction would be acting down the plane. And the second situation here, when x equals p, the particles on the point of sliding down the plane, that means the friction is going to be acting up the plane. So that's how we derive the, <coughs> these two, two equations. These two equations that we derived, this was from the first situation, this is from the second situation. The p's are the same, the mu is the same, the m is the same, right, everything else is the same. Okay, so we can use them to... Uh, solve simultaneously. So that's how we did it. We made the p's the same coefficient to eliminate the p's because we want to find what mu is. And then we solved um, simultaneously and the m's got cancelled out because they divided by each other. So there we have the answer to question number five. Okay, statics. Um, other questions from this paper, which is the January 2022 um, paper from M1 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from this topic of statics will be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area. And you can um, uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.